But after three years, three months and five days, the global health emergency is finally officially over. Hello, we're back. Welcome to vlog every day during the coronavirus. 1136. It's gotten there. It's gotten this far. Um, no, I mean, I, I know I said the last one I did uh, a year and a few months ago was probably going to be my last one. Um, but we, we're, we're, we're doing another, the last one. And the reason why that is, is because as of two days ago when this gets released, the World Health, Health Organization. Uh, declared that the COVID pandemic is no longer a global health emergency. It's um, it's lost its uh, public health emergency of international concern status. And I I mentioned in my last video when I I was talking about how. You know, at that point, if that, you know, about last bit made a year ago was was when we stopped having. It was a few years after we stopped having any restrictions, and we've never gone back since to that. Um, and when I made that video, I, I said it was a, an odd feeling because I always figured, even though I thought I knew COVID was going to be here for a while, I always figured it would be a, it would go away as fast as it came, and it finally did. It would go away as fast as it came, and then and then I, I never, for a long time, really. Thought we'd have to accept the reality of living with COVID, which we now have had to accept. Um, it's it's if it's gonna go away, it's gonna be a a, a decade long process at least. Uh, it has to go through a stage of being an endemic and then something else. It won't just it, 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 that's not how it's gonna work, and I, we're having to having to deal with that now. So I never had that kind of the the the, the, the declaration I was waiting for. We never we never got, and and I thought, well, that's that's how do I how what. As someone who needs, you know, I, I think it's part, of my, it's, it's part of me being neurodivergent, it's part of me being autistic and dysgraphic. Um, I, I work better with these these clear hard lines. This announcement of it no longer being a public health emergency is kind kind of that. I think for me, I think I've I it's it's I heard the announcement and I it really shut me down for the rest of the day because I had to. That did not sound dramatic, but I had to really internalize and feel that, and it, it kind of the, the what it was making me feel in my gut, what I was hoping to feel from some kind of finality end of COVID. And to be clear, it's not the end of COVID. Um, it's not the end of the pandemic, but sometimes pandemics don't. I mean, the HIV pandemic still going along. Um, it, after that was whenever that first became a a a a a, a first became a we're reading something. I don't know. That's before my time. Um, so I don't know. I'm just making this kind of epilogue of a vlog because this kind of, I guess, means something. Uh, and I figure we'll ask why I make these vlogs. Um, it, it's also kind of weird because I, in the week preceding, I was starting to consider more strongly than I had before that it approached. I, so I've been still wearing face masks whenever I've been outside my house in public. Um, in either large crowds, well, if I be outside in public with other people, um, or, or indoors with, with people, I've been wearing a face mask. The, the the only exception to that has been when I've been on a Duke of Edinburgh expedition, both as a participant and as an adult volunteer, purely because it's just not viable with the amount of physical exertion that I'm doing. The other exception has also actually been uh, when I've started fencing, which I've done in the last few months, for, uh, I've started fencing again. Uh, but I, I take my mask off when I'm wearing a fencing mask. I'm still wearing a mask. COVID, DV has been the only time I've, I've not been wearing a, a mask amongst people, and that's usually because I'm I'm in very much the most outdoors I can be in around people who I know are probably not who haven't got COVID because they're all uh, some degree clinical people because we've sent an ambulance as well. But apart from that, I've been wearing a mask. Uh, some people who for some reason feel the need to question me my life choices. I've heard, well, what are you wearing? Whoever, what's why are you still wearing a mask when? When, when most people haven't and you know i mean part of it is this kind of personal like like it's it's a personal kind of i'm the kind of person who like who likes long stretches i don't know how to describe this but essentially 
I have never got COVID. Even though I've been in very kind of clinical, high risk situations, I have never got COVID. I'm like, well, if I get COVID now after three years, I'll be personally really just pissed off. Um, so I was like, well, this, I mean, I'll survive it because I'm very healthy. Like from pathologically, from a, from a kind of viral perspective, I've never, I don't really get ill that often. So I'm pretty sure I'll survive it, but it's just like, I said, if I get COVID now, I'll be really, really annoyed. And also just the whole kind of thing about being responsible. And I still, I still feel we, we, we phased that masks far too early, we became too, placing too early. And, you know, I, I, I did, I was considering beginning of this year, phasing it out. And then news hit that we had a spike and Newcastle was particularly bad for it. I'm like, well, I live in Newcastle, so no. Um, I was like, well, maybe I'll, I'll have to now wait until a few more months to reach summer. We'll phase it out then. But uh, I went to a, a, a LARP festival. Um, just take a see where my, my, uh, my, where my food's going to be cooked. I went to a LARP festival last weekend um, where where I was I was still... Oh, okay. For some reason, my uh... oh no, it's still going. Never mind. Um, I went to a lot festival last weekend, and I I was still wearing a mask. Um, I was wearing a clinic. I was doing two masks. I was wearing my clinical mask, and then I was wearing a a a, a mask, a, a leather mask above it to disguise clinical mask, so I could still, you know, not know that I wouldn't tell me off for doing so, but I felt like I wanted to preserve the immersion, so I was wearing a mask above it. Um. But it, it wasn't viable because it was like a camping trip, like DV. I was having to eat. And eating is the only time I take my mask up as well amongst people when I'm eating for obvious reasons. Um, so, so you know, obviously, I, I, there was a bunch of times where I had to snack and eat to keep my energy up. Um, a lot of the socialising outdoors was food related. And then obviously when I was doing the battle uh, simulations and the LARPing, if I were, I, I tried to wear the mask and it became just untenable. I wasn't, I was getting exhausted. Um, so I had to take my mask off, but so I was starting to become more comfortable around not wearing masks amongst people. So I was like, maybe this is me thinking we reached that stage. And then during the week, I heard some news um, that two people who were at the spring festival that was at uh, had got COVID. I'm like, well, I guess maybe, maybe not then. Um, I, I, and then this news came out and that's kind of giving me the reassurance again so what am i going to do mask wise well i i, I don't i'm not going to stop i'm going to phase it out the way i think makes sense i'm probably i'm probably going to not wear it when i'm laughing anymore or here's the thing i'm probably going to wear it if, if, I'm, if, I have, if, I have, if i have to wear a shared mask sometimes the way when we're doing the, the npc side of laughing when you're being a monster you have to wear a mask these get shared around people i don't feel comfortable having that skin that that mask to my skin when i don't know what, what it's probably not been cleaned ever or recently, or enough. So I'm probably going to wear a mask when I have to wear those masks. Um, but I'm probably not going to wear it if I'm doing outdoors activities with people, uh, unless it's, unless I'm in like a thick crowd. I'm probably still going to wear it when I'm in central ambulance. It, it, I mean, as far as I'm aware, it's still the current clinical directive that when you're with patients, you wear a mask. Uh, I'm definitely going to wear it on, on in, in other, if I'm in any kind of busy, high population place, um, I'll wear a mask if I'm on any public transport. I'm probably going to wear a mask because I've seen how disgusting people are on public transports over the last kind of few years. Uh, and I'm definitely not going to stop wearing it on, on, on a bus not you know, soon. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep wearing it on my reception shifts because of how many people I come into contact with through there, but maybe not. Maybe I am. Um, I'm, I'm probably not going to wear it in the office anymore. So it's how long it takes people to notice that I stopped wearing it there. I'll have to gauge it, but I'm phasing it out. So that, and I think this is what I, this is the, the announcement I was kind of waiting for. It was either going to be this, or I was going to wait and wait and wait until it, until it kind of became comfortable. And this, this announcement has made that, those two things become one. No country has been spared by the virus. Those in darker colours have been affected the worst. According to the World Health Organization, there have been more than 765 million confirmed cases of COVID. Almost 7 million people are known to have died, though it's likely the real total is closer to 20 million. So why call an end to the pandemic emergency now? Well, it is partly the virus. The original Wuhan strain and the virulent Alpha and Delta variants caused most of the mortality. Since the Omicron family took over in January last year, deaths have declined. The version of the virus we see now is highly infectious, but less likely to cause severe disease. 
And, of course, there is the vaccine, with more than 13 billion doses given up to the end of April. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's a... That's basically how I feel about it. I'm, I, it's, it was weird. It was... I think that's, this is the close. I mean, this is the closest we're going to get for decades, I imagine. I don't think, from what I can gather, we're not going to lose the pandemic status for for a long time. Um, but you know, it, it, I think this is what we this is the announcement that makes it the same level as a HIV pandemic of it just being a thing which is existent. This is it's the closest biggest announcement we're going to get. Uh, and so hearing it, I was just reflecting over the last three years, and and I have by no means lost nearly as much. I don't know. I don't know if this is the right thing to say. I want to say I've not nearly lost enough as, as other people have lost because people... I, I don't know anyone close to me or even... I can't name anyone, really, that I know who has died because of COVID and I'm, I, I'm immensely grateful and lucky for that, obviously, because um, people have and that's terrible. But I've also lost a lot of things and I... You know, should I be selling my own... You know whilst be respectful of people who have died should i also i shouldn't be dismissing my own losses even if it's not death because that you there's ways you can lose things which aren't aren't death related i had someone who i thought was my best friend and the the distance that had that was created because of covid between us means that they are no longer in my life and now i have no one uh i they, i don't have any friends anymore they, they were my only one at that time and Obviously, because of COVID, it wasn't really opportunity to make more friends. And now that I've finished university and I've graduated, and I don't have the same social circles I have anymore, and everywhere that I do socialize, whether it's larping, whether it's tabletop role play, role play games, fencing, whatever, work, whatever, these are people I interact with in in specific capacities. They are they're not people who I am in, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, it's not people who are probably gonna be like. Do you want to come over and watch a film? Do you want to go see a thing in the cinema? We don't, that's not how it works. I, 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 part of this is my, will be me being autistic, part of this will be me being my social anxiety, and me not wanting to approach that, but, you know, that's just the situation I mean. So for the last few years, I've had enough friends. I'm in my own. So, you know, that's, 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 and that's not healthy for me. I, I'm at a period where I'm, I'm trying to work out if I have, what's called depersonalization dissociation disorder where i don't even believe i'm I, I i mean i know i'm a real person but i don't feel like i'm a real person anymore i don't i i i, I don't want to go too long in this video but um mainly because i i in four minutes i've got to go put food out of the oven and then we go shower um, and get ready for laughing because we're laughing tonight but uh essentially it's 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 it, what what i feel is i do an event i feel emotions muted but i feel emotions in the moment um and then as soon as i finish that event i don't feel like it was me at that event it was i don't feel the kind of i don't have the emotional memory of that event i don't if i, if I enjoyed the event i was laughing i was happy as soon as it's finished I'm, I'm i don't feel that anymore i i don't really feel happy anymore but in a sense that's different from depression it's just i, I, I do things and i don't feel anything from them um and i think part of that is because i've i've gone through so many years of just having not have anyone to talk to like like you know not just talk about negative things in life i've had no one to talk to about the good things in my life the achievements the fact that i graduated from my first masters of merit and my second master of distinction which i am so happy about i or i should be because i struggled so hard with my mental health during my undergraduate that i completely you know let myself down there well no i didn't let myself down my depression my my mental my, 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 my illness held me back and that clearly wasn't a factor in my postgrads, and I was finally able to prove myself that I was worthy of that. But I, I wasn't able to be, I wasn't able to celebrate that. I had no one to celebrate that with. And that that was, again, not something dramatic, but trauma isn't always, you know, physical violence, explosions, and warfare. Sometimes it can be quite intimate, personal trauma, and this is that. That was traumatic enough that I now feel this way, and I don't like it. So. Yeah, it's over. It sucked. It's not over. But it's I've now made some I've now decided that I can transition the way I live my life. 
because I saw people playing isolated them. Well, actually, I saw an interesting post just earlier today about how a lot of autistic people, or well, it, actually, sorry, I saw a post today where one autistic person uh, uh, explained how wearing a mask was very liberating for them because it meant that they didn't have to mask their autism, they could be themselves because there were no social obligations to control the way that they express their face. And I relate to that, not completely. I am someone who is who can be quite expressive about having to burn myself. Sometimes, sometimes expressing does use a spoon. Sometimes I'm, I can express myself and be fine with it. Um, but I do know that you know, in certain situations where my face isn't visible, I do feel more socially open. I think that's more a case of I don't like people immediately connecting. I don't think that's me, but I just think, so I related to it. But also, I think my thing is different. I think I socially. I'm more comfortable when people aren't connecting me to myself. It's, it's really complicated. I, I'm more open to people when I'm performing, is what I want to say. And that's kind of what I'm doing here in this vlog as well. Because there's an odd, there is a metaphorical audience, even though no one watches these videos, that I am acting to. So I'm adopting a persona of someone who's presenting a video. Um, if I'm on stage in improv comedy, I am not Harris. I am a performer playing a role. Yes, you will associate my art with me as an artist but again that me being an artist is I, i'm harris an artist harris for a performer harris who's doing improv theater not harris koreshi the person who you will know personally when i am laughing i i am struggling because i'm laughing but i'm using my real face and so i'm not being able to disconnect myself from my character but when i'm wearing a mask as my as my character i'm more open because i am how you know i'm creating an extra disconnect between me as a person and me as a character and i feel more open so to a degree, wearing masks has kind of helped with that, but I don't, I, you know, I'm not like this person who I saw, even though I relate to them, I'm not entirely like this person. Anyway, my watch is telling me that there's 20 seconds before my chips are ready, um, and I need to eat that, and then go, ugh, not enough time. I've just messed up the whole schedule of my day, whoops. Um, anyway, thanks for watching this. I said this last time, so I might be wrong, but short of a yeah my chips ready short of a i guess until then really until covid i guess if covid stops being a pandemic and starts being epidemic and that changes something in me i don't see me seeing making another one of these um but hey uh plugging my streaming channel and my other my miss vision channel where i've got the videos coming out in a few days hey anyway, i'm gonna go because i now get myself late um, this video wasn't meant to be 16 minutes long, but it has been, whoops, it was meant to be, be like five minutes long. Uh oh, anyway, uh, bye. Khalid is on his fifth dose, convinced the virus is still a threat. I don't think the pandemic's gone, personally, and just to be safe and sorry, our health problems, yeah, just to be safe and sorry. The WHO warns nations must not drop their guard. Covid still claims a life every three minutes and the shape-shifting virus could yet return in a new, more deadly guise. Thomas Morse goes... <laughs>